Frankel for CageMinds.com. Today, my guest, Andrew Herrera, he's a 3-0 amateur. He's going to be fighting June 6th, Buffalo Thunder Casino, Jackson's MMA Series 15, against Dominic Yara. Thank you for the time, Andrew. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> um, everything's pretty normal right now. This is usually how I feel around my time, so... <laughs> So, what is normal? What's your routine leading up to fight time? Um, I try to stay as focused as possible. I mean, um, I try to train as much as I can. Um, I work a work full-time job, and it's usually night. So that's pretty rough, trying to wake up every morning to train. But um, pretty much every second I have, I, I train. <laughs> so this, go this being your fourth uh, amateur fight... Have you started to develop a game plan going into a fight? Or are you still going in there kind of just seeing what comes at you? Um, I mean, the whole goal is to go professional. So um, right now I'm just seeing the amateurs. The, the whole amateur thing is a, it's really just an experience type of thing. I'm gaining cage experience. I'm gaining like, situational experience. Um, so... Right now, I honestly, I really don't care who it is I fight or how close the like two fights are. I just, I don't even care. Um, I can care less about his name. I can care less what he trains at. Um, I go in blind pretty much. My past two fights, my past three fights, I've gone in blind, and there's really no game plan. <laughs> I feel. The only time I really feel the need for a game plan is maybe at the professional level, but I'm just an amateur right now, so I don't know. I can care less. <laughs> so, from those three fights, and even including this fourth one coming up, what was the most that you knew about your opponent heading into a fight? Um, um, I knew, I don't know, I knew their names pretty much. <laughs> Did you know anybody's faces before you sh showed up at the weigh-in? Uh, nope, none. Only, only my, uh, my second opponent at the, on the ACS one card. That was the only opponent I knew. But that was because, um, he trains at a local gym, and I see him, like, I see him pretty much every day, so... <laughs> that was the only reason. All right. But yeah, other than that, I pretty much going blind. <laughs> so coming into martial arts, have you had a long time uh, martial arts background before this? Mm, not, no, not at all. I mean, I see all these guys that come from a, like a karate background. They they have their black belt by the time they're like twelve or fourteen or whatever, but. I started, I actually, I'm 19 now, and I started mixed martial arts, like, around towards the end of my 17th, or towards my 17th birthday, is when I actually started, and I, I was never really taking it seriously, it was always just kind of a, it was kind of like a, just kind of like a skill thing, I, I never really thought about taking it to the next level or anything, so, um, that actually, the whole aspect kind of changed. About a year ago, so technically I've been doing mixed martial arts for about a year and a half, but really I've only been taking it seriously for like the past year. Well, what led you to first going into the gym? Sorry, what? What led you to first going into the gym, first signing up for a class? What was it? Um, I was a kind of a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> And then me and my me and my mom one day were talking and we just thought that that'd be a pretty good outfit and so we went for it. And then how has that how has MMA done at taming your wild side? Um, <laughs> it's done wonders, man. Actually, um, <laughs> I don't know. I pretty much I give it everything in the gym and I really don't have anything to spare afterwards. Not to mention, you know, exercise is like a natural high. So, I mean, after I get out of the gym or whatever, I'm just super happy. And, I mean, it, it does a very good job of taming my wild side. So, what's 
So you were just a troublemaker looking for an outlet, and now you found a passion, would you say? Yes. Yes, definitely. So who are the guys that have been in the gym that have really played an influence on you and this change with you? fights now what's it like for you then heading to the cage the moments before the fight what's that been like for you arts taught you about yourself? of who you are? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm still in the process of figuring out who I am, but, I mean, I definitely know that makes your life is something that will always be a part of me, so. Over this year and a half of training also, how have your goals changed for what you've wanted to do with your training? From being a friend of yours on Facebook, I know you're really into lions. Yeah, I love lions. Is it the power that the leader of the of the pride of the pack? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I mean, I've I've always kind of had this feeling like I was meant for something more. You know, I'm sure so, I'm not the only one that feels this way, but I don't know. I've always kind of had like sort of leader aspects in my personality. I like taking the lead sometimes and um, I like being the leader of like the group and stuff and I've always just kinda I don't know, I just I've always kinda had leader leader characteristics and I mean a lion is probably one of like the perfect examples, you know. He's like one of the most powerful animals, the most uh Awesome. So that that would be your power animal, I'm going to gather. Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Three fights into it. 
You've had a knockout, a submission, a decision. What moment so far sticks out to you out of the three fights you've had? A moment? Uh, I don't know. I, I, think, I think this might just be me, but I, I, I don't think I've ever really... Like, even when I win a fight, I'm always dissatisfied with my performances. Um, after my first win, I was really discouraged. I thought I could have done way, way better. Um, my second fight, I was really mad too because, like, I don't know, I just said that I noticed there was so much more I could have done. My third fight still wasn't that great. <laughs> um, so he was a bigger opponent and whatnot. And it, it probably seemed like I was dominating it, but in my mind, I, it was, I, don't, I didn't like that performance. And, I don't know. It's just I'm always dissatisfied with my performances. I, I don't feel like a like I've had an opponent that really that really challenges me. Like I don't know, but uh, I'm really hoping that Dominic Yara is that opponent, the one that uh, that really challenges me the most. Um, a Nigerian that was a, a high school wrestler or something. He trained out of a conquest BJJ or whatever. So he must have a really good ground game. And, I don't know, my ground game's not that great, so, at least to me it's not. So I really hope that he, like, challenges me a lot. And, yeah. <laughs> you can knock your ground game, but I, I know better than that. I, I was there ringside at your last fight when you submitted a guy who was coming off of taking first place in Colorado grappling tournament. So I I'd say the ground game's looking pretty good for your overall game. <laughs> and the two fights left side cage side for they've been very entertaining. What are you hoping for for the rest of this year? If you had to say how many fights you're hoping to be able to take, what is your goal for this year? Uh, let's see, I've had four fights. I've had four fights. I've had four fights. The rest of this year, I don't know, man. Maybe like around six. Seven. Uh, I don't know. I wanna, I wanna just take every single fight I possibly can. Like I said, I'm at the amateur level, so I'm really just using this for experience purposes. So I mean, I'm just gonna take them as they come. I mean, I, I'll fight at whatever weight class. You know, I'll fight at 165 if I have to. You know, my weight class is mostly 45, but I mean, I'll fight up to 65 if I can. Fighting. If they have an opponent, if someone, if a promoter calls me and they have an opponent for me, I mean, I'll take it. I don't care. <laughs> so with that mentality, have you have you even stopped to think about that you're undefeated right now, or has it just went by because it's amateurs and that record's gonna go away eventually? Yeah, it's, it's, it hasn't really stuck stuck to me. I mean, I, I know I'm gonna lose eventually. I mean, it's all part of the game. Um, I'm not the type to make excuses, so, I mean, uh, it hasn't really stuck to me. And I know that, that it really doesn't matter. I mean, I'm undefeated now, but I'm an amateur. To me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, so. <laughs> I think the, whenever you hear a professional, that's when it, that's when it matters. That's when it, that's when it officially becomes a career. So. So it's been a great start to the amateur run. Just have one last question for you. Who do you need to shout out to and who do you need to thank with this fight coming up? I need to thank all my coaches. Um, obviously they've, they've been training me. Um, Patrick Tennyson is one of my, my main coaches. He's been inspiring me. For, since he started teaching me, like maybe a couple of months ago, but he's, he's probably been one of the ones that inspired me the most. Um, he's also helped me a lot um, in terms of like food and whatnot. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank all my family. Um, they're, they're, I come from a very, very supportive family. Um, and obviously, all my sparring partners <laughs> and everyone that, that's come across my path. Everyone's healthy. Everyone. 
Andrew, thank you for the time, man. Jackson's M Jackson's MMA Series 15, everyone, June 6th, Buffalo Thunder Resort and Casino. We'll see you up there. Best of luck, sir.